have here is the flat read one-way bearing instructional video. As you can see right now what I'm doing is taking the spark plug out because I have a piston stop I'll be using. I don't think you necessarily need it, it just makes my job a lot easier. And what that's going to do is stop the crank from spinning all the way around by stopping the piston obviously. And that's going to help me take the nut off of the actual uh, crank arm. And so you see there I used a uh, impact wrench to get that big ass nut off. And you got the little uh, washer there. In my variator actually the ramp plate moved a little bit. Or I guess uh, wore down a little bit. So here it got stuck. So you can see the struggle bus trying to get it off. And you'll slap there. When in doubt, hit it, obviously. So you'll see me here grab a, uh, a beaten stick. Obviously that did not work. But if that ever happens, obviously the easiest thing to do is have a friend and or a strap wrench handy. And what they can do is actually hold the clutch bell tight for you for moving and then that'll give you a little bit easier stuff to get it off now with that piston stop I can use basically just any channel lock to help get that nut off and it is reverse nut so keep in mind if you uh, try to take it off the normal way it will not come off you're just gonna tighten it down like a dingus like I almost did right there and with that you just slip her off keep in mind there is a washer in there so you don't want to lose that and so when you flip it over you'll see that you have the old starter arms in there and that's actually what was engaging before to start your moped and that's what we're trying to get rid of so you want to take your uh, flathead or any other tool you can to pop those circlips off and these are pretty easy to get off you literally just take the flathead as you can see and kind of just wedge her in there and kind of lift her up or another tool that you have that will get underneath there or you can just flip it over and just kind of give her a tap on the ground or on your workbench and it should honestly just fall right off so pretty easy Now you'll see that big bearing right there. We want to get that off. So what we need to do is take these uh, circlip pliers and pull that circlip off. And you'll notice that I am struggling also again because these are brand new circlip pliers. So I didn't tighten down the ends like a dummy and uh, they were just falling out. So. Once you got that off, side to the side so you don't lose it. And then uh, basically you want to flip your bell over. I'm just checking to make sure if there's anything else I had to take out, but I did not. But put your bell down. And now what you're going to want to do is you need to find a socket that is just big enough to fit through the hole so you don't have too much play in it. What you're going to do is you're going to take a hammer of sorts and you're just going to tap it out. I obviously tried to use a mallet so I didn't want to cause too much problems, but it did not work. So I needed to grab the convincer, which is basically just a heavy hammer. And you just want to push her out. Now, there is a spacer in there, too, you don't want to lose. As you can see, it's right there next to the bearing. And then, uh... Just 
checking to see the uh, bearing. Now this bearing does go in a certain way. Um, there is a lip in there, so you always have to push the bearing out through the back side. So don't try to go on through the front side because it will not work. And you can ruin your clutch bell. Thing again. So make sure that there is two sides to your bearing. There is a rib side and then there is a f smooth side. The rib side needs to be going outward. So you want to make sure when you put it in, you put it towards your workbench. Because otherwise it will be backwards and it won't work. I don't know. I feel like I want to heat it up. Because now, you can heat up the clutch bell if you want, but I think it's kind of... Uh, luck of the draw this one just kind of slid in a little bit so I didn't need to oh, heat it up or if you add just a little bit of oil I'm sure that won't hurt either but what you're gonna do now is again try to find a socket or anything that's close to the outer race of the bearing because you don't want to go in and mess up your bearing by getting too s small of a diameter uh, socket or anything and ruin it and then also, you don't need to be heavy handed with this. I took my time because if you go too hard and too fast, you could ruin it. So just keep in mind, take your time. It isn't a race. The other thing about going too fast too is if you uh, aren't checking and being careful, you could actually hit that lip and then once again keep going and then smash your bearing. And that is no bueno. So one part that we didn't have in the video because it didn't come out correctly was uh, there is a wooden dowel in your kit and what you're going to use that for is once everything you got that bearing nice and tight against that uh, lip you need to put that dowel in there to keep everything lined up basically so um, what you don't see in the video is you uh, or I have the uh, wooden dowel in and then I put the spacer in and the spacer is there's a specific way for it to go in and that's you want to make sure the uh, nut side of it I guess is facing towards you so it's gonna be on the back side of the bell and so once everything's in there you just kinda pound that top bearing back in you can replace it if you need to you can get those on treats or anywhere else on the internet I'm sure uh, mine was fine so I just reused it and then uh, you just wanna pound it in there again trying to get as close to the outer race as you can so that way it doesn't uh, ruin the bearing but You just want to get it in enough because there will be a little lip for you to stick that circlet back into it. Now we're putting the clutch bell back on. Same thing as you would normal clutch bell. Just slip it on there. Um, in the kit you'll also see there is uh, washers for it. Um, those are new spacers you need along with your stock washer because the bearing itself is actually a little bit shorter than the stock needle bearing. So if you don't use it, you're not going to have the proper shimming, if you will, of your clutch bell. And you can see here my hat hit the camera because, you know, moped life. Um... Apparently struggling with 
putting like washers in. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm just letting you know, so I don't know if you can see me or not. Mm -hmm. I can also just go back and count. Oh my lord. It fits. Finally. I was like, this is why I can never find one. It, they're like, this only fits Vestas. It's a 25 and a half millimeter screw. That's why I can never find one that fits. Okay. So, I had to get everything all in there. Put your nut back on. Again, I've got that uh, piston stop in still, so I'm just tighten her down with the channel locks. And once that's tight, you just put your bell back together. Now, the thing with it is obviously now that you have the one way bearing in there, if you put on the bell, count, or if you put the belt on counterclockwise, it's going to engage the engine and move your back wheel. Unless you have the like pedal disengagement, which I do not. The butthole for the first time, and you're just like, this tastes, this tastes bitter. And then you put your well, washer back on there, it tastes like candy. and your nut. <laughs> and you give her a couple ugga duggas with the uh, <laughs> tool. <laughs> Make sure you take your piston stop out, because obviously you need to put your. Uh, Spark plug back in so you can start her. Once you tighten her down with your spark plug puller, Where you go? I know. give her the old beans and she'll start right up. <laughs> <laughs> 